मैं तो दिल्ली यार दिल्ली में रहता हूँ और रेडियो फीजी बहुत रेडियो फीजी रोज सुनता हूँ रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन In the news tonight, Fiji Airways to reduce Hong Kong flights. Health Ministry on alert as WHO declares global emergency. And massive number of FNPF members to retire with no pension. From the studios of FBC Suva, Amrita Sagar. Fiji's national carrier will be reducing some flights to Hong Kong for February and March as the deadly coronavirus continues to spread globally. Fiji Airways says the decision is made due to the decline in demand from the region as a result of the coronavirus alert and travel restriction to mainland China. This reduction in capacity represents about 35% of services to and from Hong Kong over the next two months. The airline confirms they will continue to monitor the situation and further adjust schedules for the route if required. Fiji Airways will also rebook impacted guests on other scheduled services. Guests booked through travel agents and third parties are encouraged to contact their respective agents. At present, flight schedules to and from Singapore and Japan remain unchanged. Well, Corey Tandalala joins us live now. Corey, what is the latest update on this deadly virus? Thank you, Amrita. At this stage, at least 213 people have died and over 9,692 confirmed cases is recorded in mainland China. The outbreak, ha outbreak rather, has spread to 22 places outside of mainland China, where 100 more confirmed cases have been recorded. Earlier today, we also spoke with the health ministry, and they've confirmed that the six Chinese nationals and a family of four from Wuhan City that were under quarantine in Nandi have been given clearance to travel. This is after the test results came back negative. Interestingly, there is a global shortage of appropriate face masks. So we went on to speak with the director of uh, the Medicare Pacific Limited, and they're one of the main supplier in the Pacific for face masks, uh, Gotam, uh, Bu Gotam. And he told us that at this stage, there is a shortage everywhere. And also, the, he clarifies that the appropriate face mask people can use to protect themselves from the coronavirus is actually known as P2 or N95. He said most of the face masks sold in the pharmacies or chemists in our country are actually dust masks. And he said this kind of mask will not prevent anybody from the coronavirus if worse comes to us. And also we spoke with Health Minister Dr. Ifremi Wanganembete asking him on what best practices people can practice at home to prevent themselves and he reiterated that they can practice health hygiene simply by washing their hands with soap and water, toweling it dry and also when they cough, not to cough into their hands but rather cough into their elbow. Amrita. Thank you, Kuroi. The Coronavirus National Steering Committee and the Ministry of Health Task Force are continuously developing strategies to protect us as the deadly coronavirus continues to spread globally. With a suspected case announced in our neighbouring country, New Zealand, and confirmed cases in Australia, our health ministry is not taking any risk in ensuring all inbound passengers are thoroughly checked at all points of entry. Kuroi Tandalala reports the World Health Organization declared a global health emergency just this morning as the virus spreads around the world. The Ministry of Health has been liaising with WHO from day one and Minister Dr. Ifiremi Wanga in better explains the procedure they'll follow for suspected cases. Our preparations from day one is actually being prepared for the, uh, that uh, if it's going to be called a uh, public health emergency with the rest of concern. We've uh, identified places that we can use as quarantine facilities and how we go in terms of step, depending on the number of patients. So if we have, uh, area, for example, one to five, we're going to put them. And if we have more than 10 or 15, then uh, what are we going to do? Following the declaration of a global health emergency, the Fiji Medical Association president also reminded private practitioners on their responsibility. This has been disseminated to pretty much, I would say, all the general practitioners. Uh, it is at hand and it's now the onus is on the individual health practitioners themselves, private practitioners or facilities that they work in to actually implement uh, these things. The declaration comes after the death toll of the novel coronavirus continues to increase with at least 213 people dead and more than 9,600 cases confirmed in mainland China as the virus spreads globally. This is to protect especially countries with weaker health system and to prepare for that. And for your information, during my discussion with the president and other officials, 
they're willing to support countries with weaker health systems with whatever is possible. The Ministry of Health confirmed that travelers who were under quarantine for suspected coronavirus cases have tested negative and have been cleared. There are more than 100 confirmed cases in 20 places outside of China. Corey Tandulala, FBC News. The hotels and resorts in the country are feeling the pinch of the coronavirus outbreak as many bookings have been cancelled in recent weeks. While it is not the peak tourism season for Fiji, the hoteliers say during the slower months, they mostly rely on Asian visitors. Kritika Kumar reports. Chinese nationals travel a lot during this time of the year to celebrate the Chinese New Year, but this has been affected due to the deadly outbreak. We have uh, advised them that because the uh, group travel from out of China has been uh, basically curtailed, we are seeing uh, cancellations uh, of bookings on flights as well as um, hotel accommodation and obviously activities. Lockington fears the current global crisis will have adverse effects on Fiji. This is a low season, so any uh, bookings that we get is obviously appreciated, so this will have an impact. Uh, for the long term, this will obviously have um, a more widespread economic impact on, on Fiji as more countries start to close their borders, as more airlines start to consider um, reducing or stopping flights uh, to and from China. The tourism minister echoing similar sentiments but says safety of our citizens cannot be compromised. From the tourism perspective, obviously uh, we are concerned. Uh, we do not wish to see the number uh, decreasing. Uh, but unfortunately in situation like this, uh, it's all about uh, safety. And uh, safety is paramount. Earlier today, the South Pacific Tourism Organization also urged all industry stakeholders to keep abreast of the latest developments and advisories in relation to the coronavirus outbreak. The SPTO says the Pacific cannot afford to be lax in its approach to protecting the borders and the people who are at the very core of the industry. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Fiji National Provident Fund is looking at some options to address the low member balances for those who will be retiring over the next 10 years. The fund says 128,000 Fijians will not have enough savings in their accounts when they retire. Apenisa Mangayaradobu reports that of this, 66% of members will retire within 10 years, and these individuals have balances below $10,000 as of last year. The FNPF says it may review its mandatory contributions design, considering how other countries have taken approach towards retirement savings. Singapore, for instance, uh, they um, increase the contribution rate for, for lower wages. Some countries actually don't have any withdrawal, so it's all tied up to pension. The fund also plans to include Fijians working in the informal sector so they can also have a secured pension upon retirement. 120,000 uh, workers are in the employment or in the informal sector that is not covered under any scheme. These are estimates of workers that we believe gives the potential to be covered. The Fiji Pensioners Association has agreed with the fund saying it should start putting restrictions. This, uh Restriction may have to come depending on the amount of money that's down there. If it is below 10,000, because 10,000 is no money for present day activities. Kuroi says the fund has never restricted members from withdrawing their funds. However, members need to understand that every withdrawal will deplete their funds and in turn affect their balance when they reach retirement. Apeniso Wagardobu, FBC News. Students of Kia District School now have the opportunity to expand their learning following the opening of a new school library. Built in April last year, the $60,000 library is funded by the government following the request by the school committee. Eleanor Turangayview reports. Ending his three-day tour of the Northern Division on a high, Prime Minister Hurenge Mbanyamarama visited Kia Island, which is about an hour's boat ride from Lombasa. Greeted by students who lined the school footpath, the Prime Minister was at Kia District School to officially commission the new school library. Last April, a new library was built funded to the tune of $60,000 by my government, and I hope the children are making use of the books that line the shelves of the library. 
Speaking to students, the Prime Minister stressed the importance of taking advantage of the library to expand their learning through reading. When you open a book, you open an entire new world of knowledge. Every new word you learn and story you encounter expands your minds and makes you a better and brighter Fijian. Established in 1981, Kiha District School caters for children in the villages of Naku, Lingau and Yaro on Kiha Island. The school had a small room, uh, but the space is not enough for a class. So the committee requested the Prime Minister for a building. So we are fortunate to have this library. I think they will be using most of these books every day. There are 55 students in the school with four teachers teaching composite classes from years 1 to 8. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. Up ahead, still no lawyer for alleged wife killer. And 42 new lawyers admitted to the bar. Details after the break. Pula, nadang gua prosa nang kerse, gua irkeraki. Do televi on the on radio Fijian, nado mui viti. Radio Fijian, nado mui viti. Nine-year-old Congo national Kiala Henry Lusaka's legal representation is still hanging in the air as he is still without a counsel. The Legal Aid Commission has rejected Lusaka's application, who allegedly killed his Australian wife in Suva last year. Pranita Prakash reports. Henry Lusaka today informed the court that he doesn't have means to pay for a lawyer as he has no access to the funds in the bank account. The Legal Aid Commission rejected his application twice on the basis that he has means to pay for a private counsel. The Fiji Law Society appeared in the Suva High Court this morning to assist Lusaka and the court. The representatives from the society informed the court that there will be communication issues as Lusaka will need an interpreter and that a lot of resources will be used. They said Lusaka not having access to the funds indicate that he is a man of no means and the legal aid should step in. The society reps inform the court they will approach Legal Aid Commission and put in a submission for them to reconsider their earlier decision of refusing to represent Lusaka. Lusaka is charged with one count of murder of his 44-year-old wife Jennifer N. Downs. The alleged incident occurred on July 23rd last year at their rented home in Service Street, Suva. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. A 26-year-old man who allegedly caused the death of his four-month-old baby pleaded not guilty to one count of murder in the Suva High Court today. It is alleged that in October last year in Namua, Devita Kunawawe threw a concrete block at his wife, which instead hit his daughter, resulting in her death. The defense counsel indicated that Kunawawe is willing to plead guilty to a lesser charge of manslaughter. The state informed the court that they will consider amending the charge. The matter has been adjourned to 24th February. Thousands of nurses and midwives across Fiji were today reminded of the importance of their roles in the health care system. With 2020 designated as the Year of the Nurse and the Midwife by the World Health Organization, a march was held in Suva this afternoon to recognize their efforts. Kelly Vadala reports. 2020 is for those who have devoted their lives to care for mothers and children, life-saving immunization and health advice. We are unique. And if I may say, peculiar people, because we are at the heartbeat of our healthcare system. The Fiji Nursing Association says, according to WHO, globally 70% of the health and social workforce are women. Nurses and midwives represent a large portion of this. The main aim of our showing to the public is the, the celebration of the 200 years, the birthing of nursing. The nurses are here, it looks like they're enjoying their job. That's why they leave all what they are doing, especially the retired nurses that we have been running the midwife for a long, long time. WHO says the world needs 9 million more nurses and midwives if it is to achieve universal health coverage by 2030. Nurses and midwives play a vital role in providing health services. They are often the first and only point of care in their communities. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. 42 new legal practitioners were today reminded the vital role they play in Fiji's legal system. 
Speaking at the swearing-in ceremony, Acting Chief Justice Kamal Kumar told the lawyers to act with fairness with each case they undertake. Lina Reese has more. Soon after being admitted to the bar, the lawyers were warned not to mislead the court or other lawyers when handling a case. One thing you must never try, never do is try to mislead the court or lawyers acting for another party on law or facts of your case. You'll be caught very soon. For single mother of three, Natalie Rekondroka, the support from her family is one of the main things that has helped her achieve her goal of becoming a lawyer. So, um, yeah, that was very challenging, but I'm glad and I'm grateful to God that uh, he's gifted me with uh, a good support uh, unit, uh, which is my family. 26-year-old Alisa Kafoya accredited her parents who work as market vendors back in Tonga for her success. Basically, I'm a, I was a private student. So my mom and dad have to pay for my own tuition fees, rent, shopping. And my mom and dad are not working at the government or any company. Uh, they are market vendors. 41 graduates are from the University of the South Pacific, while one is from the University of Fiji. Lena Reese, FBC News. Villages in the Cuba Kamba Peninsula are requesting the government to assign buses to provide services for them. Turangani Koro and Romuna Kamba Tomasi Tokalao Vera says they are currently using taxi services which cost $25 per trip from the village to the nursery town. Senior Nibola reports. Following the construction of this new road, the villages from Ramuna, Vatan and Kalili in Kamba are now requesting for bus services. Oh, we wish, we really need the bus to come here. Many students from these villages are attending boarding schools and if bus services are provided, Parents will be able to visit their children often. We have got the visiting Sunday. We can see what our, what's the progress our children are having in that school. Kerala Chan buses, which provide services in Nakelo, says they are looking at this new route too. We are willing to provide these services to, to the village, Kama village, but we need to first meet with the FRA, uh, Land Transport Authority, and the villages, because these uh, services are for the people of the area. And it has to be suitable for them. The time has to be suitable for them. So uh, after the consultation uh, with the people, L LTA and the uh, village authority, uh, then we will be able to provide services on that uh, uh, road. The Kerala Chan Buses is currently providing services up to Kiva Village in Tailevo. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. And now it's business time with Apenisa. Thanks, Amrita. Coming up after the break... Fuel price decrease from tomorrow and in growing Fiji, pineapple industry valued at $10.7 million. Stay with us. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi and Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. New fuel prices come into effect from tomorrow with good news for some vehicle owners. Motor spirit is going down by four cents per litre, changing from $2.23 to $2.19, while premix will decrease by five cents per litre, costing $2.02 from tomorrow. Kerosene price will be up by one cent, costing $1.58, while the new cost of diesel will be $1.87, up by three cents. Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission Chief Executive Joel Abraham says Fiji is directly impacted by world market prices for both refined oils and LPG. FCCC will conduct the next fuel price review on March 1st. We now join Gary from HFC Bank with the, with the world trading market. The U.S. dollar struggled to find its footing today. This was after data released this morning confirmed that the GDP grew at a 2.1% annual rate between October and December, and this is the same as the previous three months. It is the slowest annual growth in three years as the slump in business investment deepened amid damaging trade tensions. On the labor front, U.S. initial jobless claims fell by 7,000 to a seasonal adjusted 216,000, slightly missing economists' forecast for a drop to 215,000. Meanwhile, the Bank of England held interest rates steady at 0.75%, noting signs of improved sentiment within the economy. 
At the beginning of January, a cut had been the market's base case, but expectations have been pulled back amid signs of brighter spots in the UK economy. And the jobless rate fell to 7.4% in December from 7.5% for the euro area. The unemployment is now at its lowest rate since May 2008 and only 0.1 percentage point above its lowest ever reading. And that's all from HFC Bank for this week. Minaka. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. The Fiji dollar gained against the Aussie and the Kiwi dollar, but weakened against all the other currencies we cover. In commodities, crude oil rose to over $53 per barrel, gold dropped closing at $1,571 per ounce, and silver rose to $17.82 per ounce. In growing Fiji, the pineapple industry is earning over $10 million annually. This was revealed by the Agriculture Minister, Dr. Mahendra Reddy, while launching the Foods Processing Limited's newest product, canned pineapple pieces, which will be sold locally and for the export market as well. Sainian Boiler reports. The multi-million dollar pineapple market will receive another boost following the launch of this new product. At the moment we are producing 8,500 tons of pineapple uh, annually at a value of about 10 point, uh, $5 million. Uh, we are looking at growing this. Uh, by end of this year, we are looking at uh, end of this year, we're looking at this market to be around 12 billion. And in the five days' time, we want to grow this to about 25 billion. Food Processors Limited Chair Raj Sharma believes local pineapple farmers will greatly benefit from this initiative. There are a lot of farmers who grow pineapple in uh, Talibu side and also in Western Division, in Lotuka, in Ba and also in one level. So he said that we should look at to get a market for them. And we are obviously getting imported uh, canned uh, pineapples. So we looked at, it went through about three months of uh, testing. This is a pilot project that we have launched today. So it should be out in the market. Food Processors Limited currently has over 70 products in the market which are sold locally and to Australia, New Zealand and the United States to name a few. Sainian Imboila, FBC News. That's it from business tonight. Jamie joins you now with the latest from sports. Thanks, Afanisha, and good evening. Up ahead in sports tonight, Nanduva to feature in Sydney. And Vika Matana shines for Australia at World Cup. There's some more coming up. Bula FM, number two and a series. Bula FM, number two and a series. Seven speed stylist here Nanduva is back in the tournament team after missing out on the Hamilton Sevens last week. Nanduva has been included in the final 12 member side for the Sydney for Sydney this weekend. Lanky forward up Nisa Kaumbalavu will revert to 13th man. Head coach Gareth Baber said he decided to include Nanduva after gauging player performances in Hamilton. Fiji play Kenya at 3 or 9 p.m. tomorrow, then New Zealand at 9.33 p.m. before meeting Wales at 2.19 p.m. on Sunday. Meanwhile, the Fijiana Sevens will welcome back wing Ana Maria Naimasi. The Serua speedster has been included by head coach Sayasi Fuli in his final squad after recovering well from an injury in Hamilton last week. After suffering three losses in Hamilton last week, uh, South Africa is looking to one of its senior players for inspiration. The seasoned Chris Dry will hope to inspire his team back to dominance this weekend while having some fun along the way. Aquila. The temperature in Sydney this weekend is expected to take its toll on teams at the Sydney Sevens. Fiji and Latui preparations for the 2020 Global Rapid Rugby season are on track ahead of their first match in March. Head coach Senirusi Serubakula believes the Latui is an excellent platform for more local players to go through a professional setup and into other national teams. Tyler Matairakula with this report. A total of 40 players will be selected, of which 33 will be contracted for the season. Looking at the, the skill level uh, and, and the fitness and the, and the maturity of the players, you understand what's going on outside of the field, in, in the rugby and outside rugby. And uh, I'm looking for a lot of young players, I'm looking for young players for the future, so that this is the pathway to the Drua and to the flag Fiji. Serva Kula believes the tournament will be beneficial for the local players. So it's going to be longer 
Uh, it's going to be week in, week out, and uh, it's going to be a big exposure for these uh, local players uh, playing in this kind of level of rugby. Training with the team since last November, Elite Pathway Program Manager Bill Ngandolo says players are responding well. For the, the Latui, uh, most of the boys have been in our system and also the Warriors. Uh, most of them have been in our system now for a couple of years. So they're used to the, the concept and the culture of the daily training environment. The Fijian Latui will face Team Asia in its first global rapid rugby match on March 14th at the ANZ Stadium in Suva. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports. The Waratahs consider meeting the Crusaders in round one of Super Rugby a blessing. Meanwhile, you can watch the Reds versus Brumbies match live at 8.15 tonight on FBC TV, while the Blues versus Chiefs match is currently airing live on the FBC Sports Channel. New national football coach Fleming Seretslav believes Fiji has very strong football players. He will lead the national team for the next three years after signing with the Fiji Football Association. Seretslav says he will spend some time looking at the work already carried out by his predecessor, Christoph Gamel. He adds he is happy to be here and hopes Fijian players feel the same. Former Fiji weightlifter Eileen Vikamatana continues to shine at the world stage for Australia. The Nandi-based uh, Rabo Rabo Rabatos rugby league side is counting down the days to the Melanesian Cup clash against defending champions uh, Lay Snacks Tigers. With only three weeks to go until the match at Churchill Park, the players are putting in the hard yards and staying focused on their goal. The 30-member squad consists mainly of local players with a few from the Kaiviti Silktail squad, including former Lay Snacks Tigers prop Tikiko Noke and captain Waisea Nasikai. The Rabbitohs will face PNG's Lay Snacks Tigers on the 29th of next month in Lautoka. And our play of the day, Rob Vickerman dissecting New Zealand scrum and their ability to take full advantage of it. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you with weather later on and in new media after the break. Tips on how to give up or limit your social media use. That's coming up. Hello here, Tawa. We love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In new media, are you a social media addict? Is it possible to give it up? Maybe not for many. And here's Angie with your weather update. Aloha and welcome to the amazing weather world where I give you everything weather. Now it's finally Friday, the weather was too good suited for a Friday. If you have plans for the night, maybe some bonfire night or barbecue by the beach, then you're lucky to have this outstanding weather. It actually deserves a standing ovation. Now checking the west out for today, clear blue skies without a single drop of rain. This will actually be repeated tomorrow as well. Eastwards from Pakhaba to Suva, low hanging clouds which wasn't a bother, the night will be pretty cool. End up north unbreakable clouds with light showers in store. At sea, southeast winds 10 to 15 knots, moderate seas. For the tides, high tide at 11.15 p.m. with low tide at 5.28 a.m. Sunrise at 5.52. For tomorrow, our wish for a Saturday will finally be true. Sunny spells with greatness. Tomorrow's stamps, the western side will be pretty warm. It's the vest, shorts and flops kind of weather. And looking further on to Sunday, another sunny day is waiting. Picnic is a must. What do you think about the idea, Amrita? Picnic is a must, Angie. In Fijian Pulse tonight, we asked, what do you think of Fiji's chances at Sydney Sevens this weekend? Hundred percent, they will surely win the Sydney Sevens. If they don't change the game plan, they will lose the Sydney Sevens. My rating would be just uh, between, uh, say, fifty to sixty. That's about all. I think this uh, is hundred percent Sydney Sevens. Of uh, Gary Baker can uh, perform there. 
team very well. Keep us in touch because Fiji is a good team. Because Fiji, they are a good team and they train well. And they accept, they accept to win this, uh, this weekend in Australia. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, damaged firehouses normally end up in local landfills when they can, where they can no longer be safely used. But this couple from England are recovering damaged houses to repurpose them into luxury fashion. My apologies, the story wasn't about damaged firehouses but damaged fire hoses. Now, recapping the main stories, Fiji Airways to reduce Hong Kong flights. Health Ministry on alert as WHO declares global emergency and massive number of FNPF members to retire with no pension. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to our poll question segment. This week, we're asking, should Fiji start looking at overseas players for the World 7 Series? Do visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, sent in by Ponipati Donumaimulu. The beautiful sunset was captured by Ponipati while he was on his way to Banga. You can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us through our Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us those news tips at FBC News or hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. Stay safe. Mother Mother. Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.